When you're an up-and-comer in this world, you get special treatment, but not many get their very own chartered 747. Then again, not many carry a worth of up to several million dollars each, without ever having done anything noteworthy. Never caught a touchdown pass, never made a buzzer-beating three-pointer, or never made an audience laugh or cry in a major motion picture. But these yearlings about to board this Coletta Air 747 in Louisville, Kentucky have been bred from a long and well pedigreed bloodline, specifically for performance. Their owners are betting that down the road, in another six months to two years, their horse will be a winner and will hopefully continue to win until their racing days are over in a short five to seven years. Not unlike a high-level professional athlete, these horses need the best of everything to reach their full potential. But unlike their human counterparts, they have no egos to stroke, no entourages to impress, and no fancy cars to drive. So for them, the best of everything is simply the best food, training, and tender loving care. What was it you said about the guy that has the horse plant? He's got the luxus to drink gold then. Stuff's expensive? Oh, absolutely. Especially for these guys. Oh yeah, for yeah, everything, everything, everything for these guys. It's triple the cost, you know, just to get it here to the airport. Yeah, it's just like an airplane, you know. Absolutely. If it goes on an airplane, it costs ten times as much. Yeah. Just like the food, you know, our catering. That's you could go out here and buy it at the store for two hundred dollars and put it on the airplane, it's five thousand. That's it, it's crazy. There we are, that's the name of the game. French cuisine. What's that? French cuisine. Uh, not hardly, more like sandwiches. <laughs> you're, you're the broker, or with the broker? I am employed by the broker. You ready? Yeah, look good. So are you going on the flight, or you stay here? Stay here. I'm Italian. Italian? Wow. The horses were loaded in a relatively quick and orderly fashion onto special containerized stalls for the trip. As soon as one container is taken away to the plane, an empty one quickly takes its place. When the loading is complete, they'll be off to their new home in Ireland, where they'll begin further training and preparation for when they're ready to race. This is Ben. He's the shop foreman for Sally Horse Trainers. They design and build these rolling marbles. Once on site, the trailers are parked side by side, opened up, and they actually form a stable, from which quick offloading can be accomplished. As you can see, everyone does a little bit of everything. Doubling up on duties makes the whole operation go more quickly and smoother. Well, some are working harder than others, but it does take a while to load 25,000 gallons of fuel, so why not take a little break?
first guy was 500, the middle guy was 800, and the nearest guy was 750. 750,000 dollars or pounds? Oh, dollars, dollars. Yeah. Serious. That's pretty cool. Now, now what's your job here? To just make sure the horses came on, everything was good, and there was just, no problems. You're just a handler. Yeah, yeah. Just are you going with the Are you going with the horses, or are you no, staying I wish, here? I wish I was, but sadly I'm not. I stay with the horses here in America, so they go back to the farm in, in Ireland to go racing next year as two year olds. Get this on. You. Be careful, it's slick. Strip, careful your testicles right up to nothing. Well, I don't need that. What is it? Jimmy Herrera is Coletta's loadmaster for the trip. He's responsible for the load planning, weight and balance, and about any other thing you can imagine that happens on the main deck or lower cargo holds. Right now, he's explaining to his boss and ops what is happening and how much longer he thinks it might take. How long before he uh, happens to the open? How long before he starts going? So, uh, the USDA, uh, from, from USDA. Loading requires very little assistance from human hands. The equipment is all mechanized, from the specialized K-loaders to the PDUs on the aircraft, powered from the ship's electrical system. It's interesting to note that the combined generator capacity of this 747-400 produces enough electricity to power about 250 homes simultaneously. The stress of the trip can be a major problem for these beautiful animals. In part, that's why they have a dedicated team of handlers, grooms, and even their own vet, Dr. Tina Kasser. Tina says that the horses munching on hay is one of the best tonics for the stress of the flight. However, she does carry enough sedative tranquilizers to sedate every horse for the duration, if the need should arise. They usually are very, they respond to the sedative really well, and some of the older age group, they fight it more and it's like you've just given them water oh, really? uh, and they're, they can be a bit scary but they're sort of they're generally pretty honest you know? yeah. well, we were delayed again so I, when I was in London when I got the phone call to say okay we're delayed another week so then they flew me back passenger mm -hmm. so then I went back to London the following week so I got to see the family twice and I haven't seen them in well my brother hasn't seen him in like two years and I get to see him twice in two weeks you know wow. um, <laughs> So you're a vet on the farm where these horses came from? Yeah, uh, yes. That's, yeah. Your, that's, where have, you, that's what you do mostly? Yeah, they what? have um, actually three farms, and I'm a vet for one of the farms that the, the company owns, yeah. Yeah, cool. And I work on several different farms, though, not just for this farm uh, that owns these horses. Hey, you live here in the States? Yeah, I live in Paris. Oh, you live in Paris? Paris, Kentucky. Oh, okay. <laughs> <I like Paris. laughs> it's a little bit different than the other Paris. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they can keep us on duty for 30 hours. 30 hours? Yeah, if, we, if we're a double crew. Okay, because means, you can rest. There would be four of us, yeah. Oh, so there's four, okay. Yeah. Does that mean two captains? And it used to, but the way they do it anymore, uh, a lot of times they'll have one captain and three first officers. Okay. But all the first officers are type rated there. They have almost the same qualifications as a captain. Okay. They haven't had the uh, same captain check out on the line as a captain has. And they don't get the big paychecks. So. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, but yeah, so I suppose with um, the long haul flights, they all have the like bedrooms that everyone can rest Yeah, we have a little rest, rest. area up here. Yeah. And the mechanic and the uh, load master have a bunk here. Yeah. I think the other 747, it's been, it's been in the back, the 
to that. on the classics. I think so. Yeah, they're uh, they're older, they're older style. Smaller up here, short. Well, seems a lot shorter. It has to be short. Are they they don't have as many seats. It's yeah, it's got a different layout. And they don't have as many seats. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, the the food area is up the front. Right. And then the you know the few seats and then the two. But with the with all the seven four seven externally be the same length upstairs? No, like uh, we have one in Cincinnati right now. It's a, what they call an extended range freighter, and it has a short upper deck. Okay. Yeah. This has an upper deck more like a three hundred, I think. Okay. A long upper deck. Yeah, because the smallest, the shortest one that I at least internally that I've been on is four seats, two and two. Yeah, that's. Uh, is that that short one you were saying? Yeah. Uh, we have we have a, a 400 like that, the extended range freighter. Okay. But keep those tranquilizers to yourself. <laughs> I will. <laughs> What'd you say about these horses? About the price and who who owns them in Ireland? The richest man. Are you filming Ireland? me? No. No, I'm not filming you. <laughs> the richest man in Ireland. The richest man in Ireland. I don't know what his name is. They the, do. He owns 17 of them. Uh, 16 of them. And 16 I own the rest. 20. And you own the rest. That's right. That's, a, that's amazing. And I love these horses dearly. Well, I'm just saying, uh, if you'd like to ride one, it's very expensive, but it could be arranged because I am the owner of, of uh, a couple of them. The, uh, the one that's 3. Point, what is it, 3.5 million? Oh. 3, 2, 3, 5. You know, what's 300,000 among friends? Yeah, what, what's a couple of million extra? Amazing. Beautiful horses. Well, these yeah. guys are on a level that you and I can't even... This is true. I mean, what do I know? I'm just a flight engineer. Not a very good one at that. Hey, I resemble that. <laughs> so, any out of the captain would say it would take like 12 hours to clear it. And I've said the other 12 hours. Alright. Anyhow, yeah, he's getting out. Okay. Yeah, tell them to come back and get him. Benny is the assistant stallion manager for Coolmore America. He normally accompanies the horses on all these trips. The flight is ready to leave, but someone at Ireland Customs wrongly listed him on the inbound manifest as a Canadian citizen. <laughs> Too hot. Such a warm day outside. Unbelievable. Yeah, 23. Unbelievable. Yeah. 23 Celsius. Yeah, 23 C. Sorry about that, Benny. There isn't time to straighten the problem out, so the flight will depart without him. After all, the horses are the star of this show, so we'll see you on the next one, buddy. The plane's all buttoned up and ready to go. The crew have received the clearance, completed all final checks, pushed back, started engines, and are now ready to taxi. On departure, there are a number of special procedures all designed to maximize comfort for the horses while maintaining safe operation of the aircraft. It will be a seven hour flight to reach Shannon, Ireland today. Initial cruise altitude is 33,000 feet and the flight will step climb to 39,000 feet for the Atlantic crossing, maximizing fuel economy for the trip. The route overflies the Appalachian Mountains, the Shenandoah Valley area of Virginia, and the Washington DC area, prior to taking a southerly random route of the North Atlantic airspace for the oceanic crossing. If you get into trouble, you're pretty much toast. Dr. Tina is on the flight deck and asking the crew about airplane upsets. She's as interested in the plane as the crew is in the horses. Well, I mean, yeah, this thing here is such a, it's a big flying truck, so it, it doesn't really get out of hand very easily. It'd have to be something extraordinary, but, but these things have, um, it's happened before in the past where they it's called an upset, the thing will just kind of roll. Ian Smith, one of the three flying grooms, is making a routine check on the horses. About every hour, they're checked to make sure they're calm, experiencing no problems, and have plenty of water and hay. How often 
Do you come around and check on them? About every hour. About every hour? Yeah. How many do we have on board today? 20? Right. How many horses do we have on board today? 20? Yeah, about an hour and a half left. We'll come back in about three quarters of an hour just to see. Give them another break before they land. All right, cool. The flight is about 40 minutes out of Shannon. The FO does a final check to ensure the temperature is at the optimum 12 degrees C for the horses. The crew has briefed their arrival, and the captain briefs on how they will do a slow deceleration after landing, rolling to the end to minimize effect on the horses. The flight arrives in the middle of the night in Shannon, on schedule. The crew has post-flight duties to attend to, paperwork to fill out, and will have to clear customs. Then finally, they'll take a much needed rest in the hotel. The ground crew and handlers will have to reverse the process from Louisville to offload the horses to the awaiting Coolmore Farms vans. Then many of them will get right back on a commercial flight to the U.S. Although the flight is over, there's still about another hour of travel for the horses to get to the Coolmore Farm in Tipperary. Moving from Kentucky to Ireland has been quick and had minimal impact on the horses. At the Coolmore Farm in Ireland, they'll be right back to the life they know. Lush green pastures, stables that would put some hotels to shame, 24-7 care and attention, state-of-the-art trainers and facilities. But the biggest challenge may be getting used to even more and thicker Irish accents.